in the book of Mark this morning, uh, in chapter 5. This is what I woke up this morning on my mind with. And uh, hopefully it will be something that, that helps you through your day. Chapter 5 of the book of Mark. If you know Jesus, you love Jesus. Amen. If you don't know him, you may admire him, you may wonder about him. But it's like the old song, right? Somebody wrote about this, and this lady would say, No, 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 no. When you know the Lord, you love him. But you have to hear about him somehow. Sometimes it's through revival. Sometimes it's through working with someone who is a Christian. They witness to you. Sometimes, because God's not going to just leave you hanging. Sometimes it's you actually, all of a sudden, there's something that catches your ear. And maybe you listen a minute. God has his way of reaching us. But just because we hear him or hear of him doesn't mean we know him. Uh, so when you do know him, you love him, and you love him more every day. I mean, I suppose that's how your relationship is. I know it is mine, and not just as a provider. Because if we're not careful, we could get put in the same uh, category that Jesus put those in that would follow him because they saw the miracles and right. because they were hungry yeah. and he gave them food to eat. <laughs> yeah. and you and I both know that, uh, that you know there are people, people that will, uh, I said this last week, and I believe with all my heart, there are there are going to be people that will eat a hot dog any day you got a hot dog to give them. They don't want nothing to do with Jesus. They just take whatever you're giving them. Does it mean we shouldn't give it to them? Absolutely not. We should give it to yes. them. Amen. The choice is going to be up to them. And it was the same in Jesus' day. And you know, Jesus wasn't the first one to come on the scene because they were looking for a Messiah. So as they were looking for a Messiah, they were waiting for him to come. The... Uh, Roman government was in place and was in rule. It'd be like me coming to your house and camping out and setting up um, guard and everything and being in your and going to your refrigerator and getting food out of it or whatever. Uh, they had someone else in their territory there in uh, Jerusalem uh, that made the rules. And uh, these folks that were praying for a deliverer to come were just like the folks in Moses' day that were praying for a deliverer to come, and when God sent Moses, they didn't want Moses. Right. And guess what? When God sent Christ, many of them didn't want Christ. Right. And it's the same way today. So we give it, they either take it or they leave it. You were there, I was there. But when we do take it, we realize that not only do we love him now, but it grows every day. Amen. So I woke up this morning with a thought on my mind, and I knew what I would be reading, but the thought is, well, you'll see here in a minute. Hopefully it'll be something that will be of help to you. Chapter 5 of the book of Mark. Sometimes people don't like the pastor to read um, the same text that other people have read or that anybody can read. Anybody can read this text, but the pastor ought to be fantastic at telling about it, right? Well, you might not hear anything new today. But you will hear the word of God. Amen. In verse 25 of chapter 5. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. 
Now, just a very simple reading. This is not very difficult to understand. This woman had a female problem, if you would look at it that way. She was bleeding to death. She had this issue of blood. It was uh, something that uh, she had been to the doctors um, for years. And not only um, that, under there, if you go back and look in the Old Testament, uh, you will see that uh, this is a part of being unclean. And so... Here she was probably ostracized, set aside probably by those others around her. But she was sick. She knew she was sick. She had been sick 12 years. You know what the problem is with us sometimes before we get saved? We don't know we're sick. And we are, but we don't know. Somebody just said on the radio the other day I was listening to, they read the obituary, and in the obituary it stated that this man had died after a short battle with cancer. And I thought to myself... Uh, he only knew about it a short time, but it wasn't a short battle or it wouldn't have grown so big that it took his life. And so uh, that's how we are as sinners. We don't know until we know. Yeah. The good thing about it is if God is merciful enough to let us go long enough that we finally all of a sudden it hits us that we know, look how long it's been destroying us yeah. until yeah. our eyes are finally Amen. open. And when they are open and when we give our hearts to the Lord, then we begin to love him. But this woman heard about Christ somehow. I don't know who it was. It may have been a friend. It may have been somebody that knew that she had this illness going on and said, you know, why don't you go to this doctor? But she may say, well, I've already been to that doctor. As a matter of fact, I've been to 12. I've been to all these doctors in 12 years, and I can't find anybody. Every time she went somewhere else, there was more money out. Things don't change much, do they? <laughs> More money out and never found an ability to what the scripture says heal her or cure her or give her uh, something that would stop this. She could have died by now, but that wasn't in God's plan. Right. I don't claim to understand the workings of God or how everything works. If I want to know the mind of Christ, I read the word of God. If I want to know the mind of God, I read the word of God. And I can read and say, okay, God did this here, he did this here, he did this here. God does not change. But I also know that circumstances do change. And in those process of those circumstances changing, what may have been the best thing for one person, because God is God and he is sovereign and divine and knows that, may not be the best thing for another person. Although it may look like it would be the same thing. Only God knows that. So for me to question God's authority on that, I would be wrong. I'm not telling you I've never questioned God. But to question the authority or to question something like that uh, out of me or out of you would be wrong. I never tell people don't question God. I tell people don't accuse God. You can question him, I believe, just like if my dad uh, uh, said something to me or something happened and I would go to him and ask him. I believe he would give me the explanation if he thought it was my business. You may never get an answer. Um, but folks, I'm telling you, it's, it is a sad thing when people who claim the name of the Lord are scared to death to have a relationship with a loving God. Amen. And so if you can't go to God and ask Him a question, who can you ask? Amen. If you look at Him, if you've been taught to look at Him, not with just reverence, but with fear, like you're afraid He's going to strike you dead, well, let me ask you this. What have you been doing that you need to be killed for? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to come in and sing there's joy unspeakable when you live like the devil all the week, Amen. right? So um, uh, if you're looking and saying, oh, I'm afraid yeah. of God today, I would say you may have, as a Christian, if you're telling me that, I would say to you, you probably got some issues that you need to take care of. Because you know, as your parents would raise you, don't do this. If you do this, this is what happens. What happens when you do it? Some mom and dads forget about it, or they, you know, the next time. Now, my dad was never like that. He told you don't do it. You didn't do it. If you did do it, you knew what you were getting. And Amen. when you got it, you'd get it again if you did it again. Amen. And so, if we look at this and think, okay, God's going to be, he's going to be all right with that. If we look at God as being a God that is just all grace and there is no condemnation and there is none the book of Romans says if we walk not after the flesh but after the spirit yes. so somewhere along the line there is maybe a difference of 
how close that person was versus how far away from God they are. Are they still a Christian? I would say yes, but let's go back to looking at this scripture here. This lady tries everything that she can think of. In everything that she can think of, she hears. In verse 27, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. But she said, if I am touched but his clothes, I shall be whole. The book of Hebrews talks of faith. In chapter 11, we hear a lot about faith. This is a faith issue right here. This woman probably had faith to believe that the doctors could do something. Or was she just throwing caution to the wind and doing whatever because all she knew was, I got a little bit of money, I'm dying, I need help. So she went to get help, and they couldn't help. And how many times with that falling through did it occur to her the next time that this probably will not help either, but I'm going to try it. And she continued to try it until she spent everything that she had. But you notice it doesn't say that as her mindset when she comes to Jesus. It doesn't say that at all. This time it says that she had heard of him, and when she heard of him, she said, I'm going to go, I'm going to press through that crowd, I'm going to touch his garment, because if I do that, yeah, I will be home. made whole. So, so there was something about the person that told her about the Lord. Let's stop and examine that a minute. I don't know who it was that told you about the Lord. It probably wasn't the first time you heard about him probably wasn't from the preacher. It may have been. It was probably from mama, from daddy, from grandma, from grandpa, from brother, sister, somebody else. Because you know how people, people are like night crawlers with a light. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you ever go to night crawler hunting yeah. when I was a kid? My dad would take us. We'd have to get the night crawlers so we could catch the fish, right? The fish were about as hard to find as the night crawlers were sometimes. But you shine a light on them. We'd be out there in the rain, you know. They'd be laying all over the place. But you shine a light, and as soon as the light hits, back down in the hole. And that's how people are when you say, come and go to church. <laughs> And I know, we, we've been back from Myrtle Beach. We lived there for, for almost five years. We've been back a year, and there were people when we were gone saying, oh, we miss you so much. Oh, we wish you were back. Oh, if you were close, we'd come. Oh, if we lived down there, we'd come out baloney. <laughs> there are people that live so close to this church, you could almost throw a rock and hit them. We haven't seen them. We've been here since March. Now, what will we do? We'll keep going because I ain't going for them, just like I didn't want them coming for me. But you ask somebody to go to church, uh, that make every excuse yeah. in the world. Yeah. So, you probably didn't hear about Jesus first through the preacher. You probably heard about him through someone else. Well, whoever it was that told this woman about Jesus must have been very convincing. And that could be a lesson for us in how to witness Amen. to others. <coughs> well, let me ask you this. If the person that told the woman with the issue of blood about Jesus <coughs> was a big liar, was a liar about everything, lived a life of a miserable wreck, <laughs> and, and claimed to have a good relationship with God and said, hey, you ought to go down here. Do you think that woman with the issue of blood would have took her word for it at all? Probably not. She probably would have said, you can't believe anything that woman said. And so be careful. If you're going to witness to people, either stop lying <laughs> <laughs> Live like you know God, right? Don't act. Know Him, love Him, and it comes in and saturates you. And then when you go out and tell other people, they may not know Jesus, but they knew you, and they know what He did for you. And if He can do that for you, He can do that for me. Now I don't know who it was that told this woman, but when she heard, and maybe more than one, but she heard about Him. So she decided that she would go. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. I mean, can you imagine? Having that going on for 12 years and then all of a sudden it stopped. She knew there was something that had happened. There was something different here. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, Who touched my cloak? And his disciples said, my words today would be if someone said that to me and we were in a big group, 
you used to go to the Scioto County Fairgrounds and have to hold on to your kid. There were so many people there. We went last year to watch our little granddaughter on the rides, and I was like, man, this is a ghost town compared to what it used to be. But I'm picturing what the county fair was when I was a kid, or a big concert or something, people everywhere. And holding on to the person so you don't lose them, right? So and in that crowd, someone touched Jesus. Well, his disciples turned and did no doubt what you and I would do. Are you kidding me? And you're asking, who touched you? Do you think there was anyone else touched the hem of his garment that day? I, I do. I think there were other, well, where's the hem? Probably here. Oh, good. I, probably here. And probably there. And probably, that's probably where she touched him. She's weak already from losing blood. What does losing blood do? It makes you weak. She's probably weak already. She may have come close to being trampled on by the world, but she still had enough to say, but if I can get to him, well, you know what? Those folks that just went down there yesterday or so, they just dealt with a whole lot of people that we, we could look at and say could almost feel like they're about to be trampled on by the world. But guess what? If they would touch the hem of his garment, not just yeah. come for food, not just come for clothes, not just yeah. come for a place to stay on a cot one night, but if they would really come looking for him, yes. yeah. Amen. they could find something that would change their lives forever. Amen. Jesus said, who touched me? And they could have said, one of them alone, one of the disciples alone could have said, I've counted 10 people already that have touched you. Which one do you want to talk to? But something happened. And so that's what I want to say to you this morning. The whole sum of what I will say from here on is just simply talking about faith. Faith. Who, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? Yeah. The woman fearing what had done within her, and she had no doubt been in the distance still to hear him say, you touched me. Uh, she turned around and told him all the scripture says, all the truth. She told him everything. She didn't lie to him. There are people who talked to Jesus before that lied to Jesus, and Jesus said, that's not the truth. This time, it didn't happen. She didn't lie. She didn't exaggerate. She told him the story. Can you imagine how heartwarming it must have been for Christ to know that for this purpose, he hasn't died yet. He came to die. For this purpose, this is why he's come, to give his life for the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Here he is. He even did it for, um, for the rest of us as well. But here he is, and this woman stands and tells him the whole story. Well, I've been to this doctor. They couldn't do anything. I've been to this one. How heartwarming for Jesus to hear. But then I heard about you. Her faith then is going into action. She's not healed until she touches. She's got to touch him. Other people probably touched him. But other people might not have touched him. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. I was joking with Taylor this morning. I said, uh, are you ready to pitch some softball? She said, yes. I said, yeah, but are you, are you ready? <laughs> I mean, she could be ready because she wants to be ready to do it, but are you ready to do it? Is it ready to do it? Are you ready to go? There are people that could touch the physical garment. Amen. But they could not touch Jesus with their heart because they weren't looking to yeah. touch him. And there are people every day that want what we can give them. You can give them. They want. Sometimes sometimes people will come. I know this is a fact. If you live what you profess, people will look you up. They will talk to you. They will private message you. They will send you a text. They will want to know, will you pray for me? This is what's going on. Yeah. Will you talk with yeah. my loved one? But when it comes down to it, do they want anything to do with God? No, not right off because they got George, and he can do it. They've got Bob, and Bob can do it. Let's call a prayer chain, and they can do it. And sometimes it is good for that person to finally get to where they've tried every position, and nothing has worked. And, man, that is hard to watch somebody go through that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Here, let me help you up. And they smack your hand away. 
let me help you. And they don't want anything to do with it. Somebody said to me one time, you know I'm a hospice chaplain. Someone said to me one time, said, my husband, he's a typical man. He won't go to the doctor. He'll never go to the doctor. He won't. I said, yes, he will. No, he won't. Yes, he will. You don't know him. I said, I know pain. And I'm not bothering my red I know pain. I said, and a lot of people won't do a lot of things when they have the clarity of mind to say, I'm not doing that. I said, but when he feels a pain that brings him to his knees, he'll go to the doctor, to the hospital. It doesn't matter if they're going to operate him on the floor of a restaurant. He'd go. He will go eventually. Something will, well, sometimes people, we watch them ah, for a while maybe. They're floating above surface, but then they start sinking, and finally they go down. And finally, finally, uh, they can receive the help that they need when they stop looking to everybody else and finally say, okay, God, help me. I don't, I don't know that I ever told you this. Someone asked me uh, two days ago, sitting in a room of a man that after I had left, had passed later that evening. I'm sitting in there with a son and a daughter-in-law. Uh, who were maybe a year or two older than me, and maybe looks were deceiving, I don't know. Um, but as we talked, he said, so why do you do what you do? He said, what made you a, what made you a, a, a hospice chap? Well, that's a long story, and so we did have all day, but I didn't go through the whole story. But let me share something with you. After my father's death, our daughter, my wife, myself, moved in with my mother. My dad was gone. My mom needed help. Now, folks, my, when we were young, my dad was 42. My mom was 40. We were 21. They started young, right? So they were young, and they were just getting to the point their kids could be out of the house, and they get to the point where they could live life or whatever. When he passed, it left such a devastation in my life. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Well, he does a good job, and the more you let him steal, he will. And he was stealing my family away from me right under my nose, all because one person was gone. I was allowing everything else to pass me by, and I just continually floated downstream. And one evening, uh, after being out way too many hours, a guy brings me home because I cannot drive by myself. And I'm on my hands and knees. <coughs> There's a big well rock where we lived with a pump that belonged to my grandfather and my great-grandparents that my dad had sat there. There's a big sycamore tree there where we lived. He was gone. I was trying to destroy the pain of that being gone today lying to you. I don't care where you look, what bottle you look in. <laughs> Here I was, hands and knees, sicker than a dog, looking at the porch. I saw as my wife and our little daughter, our daughter Tiffany, didn't have our son wasn't born yet, she was pregnant with him. We're there. My mother came out, her words of wisdom, because, man, she can throw some punches. <laughs> Why are you doing yourself this way? She had already lost her husband. And here, and, and if you got kids that put you through misery, you know what she was doing when she was coming up. Why are you doing yourself this way? When she walked away from me, I remember saying, God, I don't know if you're real, but if you're real, I'm going to need help. And I remember probably a couple of years later, a guy that I, that I used to run around with said to me, what happened to you? She just fell off the face of the earth. He said, you just, you were this, and then boom, all of a sudden we never saw you anymore. He said, Tell me what happened to you. <laughs> so I told him that story. I said, look, it's either drink myself to death, it was either destroy my life, lose my 
my family. I said, I remember saying, God, if you're real. What was I doing? I was touching the hem of his garment. Amen. That's what I was doing. Amen. I was reaching. I didn't understand everything that I understand now, but I know one thing. I was dying, and I needed help, and I tried everything else, and that hadn't worked. So what did I need to do? I had to reach for myself. It wasn't yeah. my mama could yeah. do it. It wasn't my wife could do it. Our daughter couldn't do it. Our son wasn't born yet. No one else could do it for me. I had to do it, and I said to that fella, I said, there's a song that I remember from church that said, standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. I said, yeah. it was almost as if he stepped out from behind that sycamore tree and said, here I am. That's what he wanted of me, was to acknowledge him. He wanted me to touch him, more than just the hem of that garment, but to touch his heart. Amen. And so, this woman touches, she is made whole, she gives her testimony. Not before the whole church, but before the maker of the church. Yeah. She gives her testimony before the Lord and everybody around. And my thought this morning is this, and then we'll give an invitation. I woke up this morning. I don't know what I dreamed last night when the kids come over. It's great to have them. we got a king-size bed, but if, if you can't tell, I'm not little. And they keep getting bigger. Matter of fact, Ball, the dress that uh, she had to wear this morning, she's grown out of it. So she's in shorts and a shirt this morning because uh, she's grown out of it already. And so here they are just growing. And they like to sleep on the air mattress. And so we pump the air mattress up. You know, they lay on it while it goes up and it goes up. And here they are laying in there. I don't know what they dreamt about. They were talking about it on the way here. I don't even remember what I dreamt about. When I keep setting the place at the table. Now there's a song I sing that talks about the prodigal son. And the song says, although he's out and he's at the hog pen, the song says, he's still setting my place at the table. He's still calling my name in prayer. Amen. He still looks down the road and somehow he knows his prodigal son is coming home. I know a person who never changed their child's room when that child got of age and left. They never changed it. And they never changed it for this purpose. They didn't say he's coming back to be a child someday, but they didn't change it because they started going through a depression and it got them bad. And the more kids you have, guess what? <laughs> They're not going to be in Noah's Ark forever. And you know me so we like, could you imagine everybody comes in and looks and you got a 40-year-old kid sitting here and a 30-year-old kid sitting there and you're dreading that they're ever going to leave you. But they do. And uh, they don't tell you when they hand you that baby in the hospital that this thing right here is going to pour it. it it's gonna, you're going to pour your life into it and it's going to pull your heart out of your chest Amen. one day. They don't tell you that. This is like looking at a little pup. You show me a pup all day long, but man, don't bring me a dog. <laughs> <laughs> they grow, right? <laughs> yeah, I was a pup once too, so I understand. <laughs> so, hear this woman. <laughs> hear this woman and, and waking up with this thought. I'm still setting the place at the table. What did this woman do? She kept Going to the doctor. She was doing everything. You know what they have said? Um, definition for insanity is uh, doing the same thing every day and expecting to get a different result. <laughs> okay, what did she do for 12 years? She went to every doctor around. And she was expecting, but this time she got a different result Amen. when she went to the great physician. Amen. She did this routinely. It was a reason. What she did was she didn't just stop and die. She didn't just give up. She kept on. She kept on. She never lived. She only existed. She started living when she touched the Lord. So we look at setting the place at the table. We look at if that prodigal son's father did like the man I told you. If he never touched that room. If he left everything the way it was. He might have went in there and looked and said, he'll be back. He might have went the first day and said, he's gone. Wow. He might have went the second day and said, I know a gentleman that sat and, and 
talked to his son who no longer lived with him, sat in his room. I know a person that laid clothes out on the bed, the child's clothes, the adult child's clothes out on the bed and was sat there. It just made them feel better. It was, it's, a, it's a grief process. And so it's an everyday, everyday. Can you imagine? Table set. What are you setting that table for? What you, what you got that plate there for? They're not coming home. But every day, every day, every day, every day. Did he come the first day? No. The second day? I don't know how long Victor thought of a sudden come back. But I do know he came back. So I'll wake up this morning thinking the persistence and faith of that woman that touched the hem of his garment. I know where I was and no one could make me see it. It had to be God. Amen. To show them. No one could make me see it. And the more people tried to, the more I pushed them away because I was my own man and I didn't need anybody telling me. And I know you know people just like that right now. And so what do you do? Shut the door forever? Or just keep setting the place at the table? That's right. Setting the place at the table. They might not be there to eat today. They might not be there to eat next week. They may not be there to eat next year. You love them. They love you. God loves you. You continue to carry it to the Lord, whatever it is. I promise you this. At, at who am I just to serve him the Lord? I promise you, you carry it to him if it means something to you. Yes. Bob Wolf. <laughs> yeah. Old Bob. Mm -hmm. He was here the other night visiting with us. He'd be over there at Lombardville sitting on the front row. Every once in a while he'd stand up and say, it don't matter if you're praying about a dog, it don't matter what it is, how little it is, if it means something to you, it means something to God. Folks, I don't know what it is you're going through today, but if it means something to you, it means something to God. Now, I don't know, and I could uh, try to wind in a kind of subliminal message. I don't know what the Holy Spirit will speak to you on. It may just be a straightforward the issue of blood. You may say, I've got health problems. Let's see. We'll pray about it. Get this taken care of. However it is, I know what he spoke to me on about. When I woke up, I just thought, okay, God. Okay. Because you see it every day. What are you going to do? Have another birthday. It beats the alternative, right? Unless you just want to go to heaven. Because if you don't have a birthday, you're dead, right? So what? Another year rolls by. Kids grow up, get the air mattress out. Next thing you know, and it's, it's a big one. Next thing you know, had to buy another one. Next thing you know, man, who knows what. I mean, it, things just keep happening. They just keep going. I'm sitting up here looking at those grandkids today, how much they are just growing, how much they change. And already, already, Gage can't wait to get his driver's license. Before you ever said it. He's like, that's a, that's a thing he wants to do. What is he, six years old? Ten more years? Nine and a half, someone will say, right? And who knows, by then they might let him drive at 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's vote for 21, right? But anyhow, time goes. It never stops for anyone but the person it stops for. That will be the <coughs> But until then, keep setting the place at the table. Until then, keep reaching for the hem of that garment. Until then, keep the faith that God has given you. Yeah. Hold on to it. Amen. I don't know how many times you go back and look out the window and say, are they there yet? Are they coming back yet? I don't know. I don't know. But I just know. Give it to God. Let him help you. Amen. As we stand this morning, Miss Connie comes to the piano and plays us a verse and a chorus of song. If you're here today and you have a need, come and let us pray with you, please.